Tonight I just want to close with a short story. Some of you have heard it before, maybe a lot of you have heard it before, but it's just a story that I felt should be shared tonight. After my first year of college, I got a job at a construction company that my next door neighbor was the vice president of. I was hired to be a laborer at a high school that they were building. And it sounded great because it was more money than I had been making. But when I got there on the first day, I found out that absolutely nothing about the job was what I was told it was going to be. First of all, I was told that it was going to be Monday to Friday, 7 to 3.30. That day one, 7 o'clock, when they introduced us all, we were told they were way behind schedule, and it was now Monday to Friday, 7 to 5.30, and Saturday, 7 to 12. The money was still great. I think I was making $7 an hour, which was a full dollar an hour more than I had been making at chick fil -A. But it didn't take me long, because this was brand new to me, it didn't take me long to learn the dynamic of construction crews. I figured out who to talk to, who to stay away from, who it was okay to ask questions of, and who I needed to just get out of their way when I saw them come. Each laborer was paired up with a carpenter, and basically I spent all day, every day, doing whatever I was told and then cleaning up somebody else's mess. There was this one guy that within the first couple of days I quickly realized that I needed to avoid. He seemed to always be angry, his language was the most foul I had ever heard, and everything about him made me uncomfortable. But wouldn't you know it, about three or four weeks into the summer, my carpenter was out sick one day and I got paired with, guess who? The one carpenter that I had tried my best to avoid every single day. His name was Mark. And so that morning, I decided that I would just get through that day. I would do what I was told and say as little as possible. The problem was Mark didn't work like that. He talked all day long. I stayed quiet, not being rude, just offering up much, but not offering up much conversation. And then finally, after a couple of hours into our day, he's working along and talking and talking and talking. And he just says to me, so they say you're going to be a pastor. I said yes. He then asked where I went to church, and when I told him the name of my church, he said loudly and with excitement, that's my church! <laughs> I don't know what my facial expression was, but I'm sure it wasn't great, because his excitement calmed down, and he said more quietly, that's where I used to go to church. And he started to tell me about his experience. He told me his mom's name. It turned out I knew her through the church. He told me he had gone on the first missions trips that the church had ever taken when he was a teenager. He told me about a lot of things and a lot of people that he remembered from his time at the church. And then he just started to tell me about his life. He told me about his hurts and his disappointments, his anger and his shame, and he turned out to be one of the nicest but saddest and most broken people I had ever met in my life. And at 18 years old, I started listening to this guy that I did not like. And suddenly realized just how much God loved him. A few weeks later, I was going to be preaching at youth group, and so I asked Mark if he wanted to come. He said there at work that he wasn't sure, but then when I got up to preach, there he was. And I have absolutely no idea what I preached that night, but I will never forget that when it came time to pray, Mark walked to the front to rededicate his life to Jesus. Next day, I brought him a Bible, and for the rest of the summer, Mark and I ate lunch together, we prayed together, we even started sitting together at church, and I watched as God didn't just change his life, God healed his heart. But here's the beauty of God. I didn't go to Mark. In fact, I didn't want to go to Mark. I had no interest in Mark, but God took me to him. Because that's how much God loves Mark, but that's also how much God loves me. I didn't want to be a witness, but God wanted Mark to have a witness. He made me uncomfortable. I didn't like the things he talked about. I didn't like the jokes that he told. I didn't think that he was deserving of my time or my interest, but I didn't remember that he was not just deserving, but he was possessing all of God's grace and all of God's desire for salvation. See, the Great Commission is not about our effort, it's about God's grace. It's not how we win the world, it's how we live for Jesus by living like Jesus and get to, get to join Jesus as he sheds his love abroad. I spent one summer working a hot, terrible job because God wanted to involve me in showing his love to one broken man. 
And it has changed the way I view everyone every single day. Because everybody is one repentance away from redemption. Because everybody is the desire of God's heart. Because he died because he wills that none would perish. Because God desires that everyone would be saved. And how does he get his, that, that truth to everyone? By you and by me. By sometimes places we want to go and sometimes places we would never go. He puts us in people's lives for his glory and because of his love. And so when we push back, we're pushing back from God. And we're pushing back from his will. And we're pushing back from his grace. And so those people that annoy you, God loves you, loves them. Those people that offend you, God loves them. Those people that seem to suck the life out of you every time you look at your phone and don't want to answer it again. God loves them. 